Fox Sports. We are Buffalo. We are Houston. Last night, the Houston Astros bats came alive to lead them to a much needed win. Tonight, a new series begins. Bud Norris gets the start against the surprising Pittsburgh Pirates. Houston Astros baseball is next on Fox Sports Houston. Houston, Texas. Fox Sports Houston brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight, the Astros open a three game series with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Jim Deshays. The Pirates seem to be a much better bunch than we've seen them for the last 18 years or so. They're only a game under 500, JD. Yeah, if they finish 500 or better, they'll make new manager Clint Hurdle, the mayor of Pittsburgh. What a run he has had. We're going to focus on a couple of outfielders tonight, all series long. Indeed, Andrew McCutcheon, one of the best young players. And all of baseball got off to a sluggish start, but now hitting close to 300, has speed and power. And Hunter Pence, nobody hotter than Hunter Pence right now with that 23-game hitting streak. He's got his average up to 325. Coming up as the Astros take on the Buccos here at Minute Maid Park, it's Jeff Carstens, part of that very good Pirate pitching staff this year, fifth in ERA in the National League, and Bud Norris, who had the strikeout day to remember against the Buccos here last season. That's game one, and it comes your way next. Brought to you by the Progressive Insurance Group. For a money-saving car insurance quote, call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today. And by Southwest Airlines' new rapid rewards, unlimited reward seats, and no blackout dates. 
sun is streaming in through the glass in left field. That will be out of the way shortly as we have baseball, the first game of the three-game set with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Greg Lucas on field level and in the booth to call the play-by-play. -play. Let's go to Bill Brown and Jim Deshays. Thank you, Greg. In today's game, we are participating in the home run challenge. Today, every home run in this game raises $17,000 for prostate cancer research. You can make a pledge by calling 800-798-CURE or go online to www.pcf.org. Doug Brocale is in his first game as Astros pitching coach. Interim, he's not sure if he'll be here even tomorrow night in this role. He has not had a chance to talk about this yet with his wife, Lisa. They'll talk after the game tonight. And uh, so it's very much a very sudden move for the Astros. Now the starting lineup is brought to you by Xfinity. And here's the lineup Bud Norris will be facing tonight from Clint Hurdle's Pirates, who are 32 and 33. Jose Tabata leads off in left field. It's Ronnie Cedeno at shortstop. Andrew McCutcheon is the center fielder. Neil Walker cleans it up at second base. With Garrett Jones in right field, while Overbay at first base. Michael McHenry at catcher for the second straight day. Brandon Wood, the third baseman. Jeff Karstens is the pitcher. But Norris for the Astros tonight. He's four and four with a 367 earned run average, an earned run average that went down after that outing against the Cardinals on Wednesday. Eight innings of one hit baseball for Bud. It was a little bit of a, a different kind of game for him in that he did not strike many out. Just a couple of punch outs had five walks, but just the one hit, one run allowed. The Berkman home run spoiling the no hitter. Defensively, it's Lee Bourne and Pence in the outfield. Field has Johnson, Barmas, Keppinger, and Wallace. And Corporon behind the plate. Norris coming off that beauty against the Cardinals on Wednesday, the 4 to 1 win in which he allowed one hit and one run in eight innings. So Lance Berkman Homer goes out for his third straight win. He had won the previous start in San Diego, 7 to 4. And Bud is 2 and 3 lifetime against the Pirates. Including that glittering big strikeout game last year we talked about earlier. Clint Hurdle has his Pirates revved up and five games out of first place in fourth place in the NL Central. In his ninth year as the manager, his record is 566 and 658. But the Pirates have not had this kind of success to this point in the season in a while. He's a very enthusiastic, vocal sort, and they have played hard for him. A lot of what they've been doing is based on good pitching. They are 13th in runs scored in the National League. They're a banged up club right now. They have used six different catchers this year. That's the first time since 1988 they've done that. They've got nine players on the disabled list right now. The uh, starting pitching has been very, very good. And the relief pitching has been solid. And Hanrahan, the closer, has been. Pretty much perfect. Yes, he has. Jose Tabata, 269 with three homers, 12 runs batted in, goes for the first pitch. Hits it out of play for strike one. Tabata is tied for second in the majors in on base average by a leadoff man. When he's the leadoff man, his on base average is 405. He's on a nice hot streak right now. Last week he's hitting a 464, 13 out of 28, so keep an eye on him. And, uh, Andrew McCutcheon as well. He bats third tonight. One and two for Bud Norris. And a mystifying slider right there. In the last 10 games, 395. He scored 22 runs in 29 games as the leadoff man. He went for it and he struck out. Field and Culbert is the umpire behind the plate. Good depth on those last two sliders and weak swings. And it's an indication that the hitter just not seeing the ball out of his hand well. Not recognizing the slider spin. Ronnie Cedeno, 226 with two homers, has driven in 18. Looking at ball one, the slender shortstop. Snapped an 0 for 16 streak with an eighth inning single last night against the Mets. Pirates are coming off a 6 and 4 record on their homestand. That's out to right field. Hunter Pence breaks in, slides, catches it off to the left side. Two outs. He's got.
Got to make a couple more just to get Jason Michaels off his back. <laughs> night Michaels had the other day. That's right. Hunter took that day off, and Jason made three very nice plays. Two days ago, that was. Yeah. Andrew McCutcheon on a 12-game hitting streak has hit 500 during the last 12. 292 for the season with 10 homers for McCutcheon. Former leadoff man now batting third because he is hitting very well in the clutch. There's strike one. He's 24 years of age. Just a very, very talented guy. No balls, two strikes. Bud has the slider working early. 21 hits this month for Andrew McCutcheon. During his 12 game hitting streak, he's 21 for 42. He's reached base in 18 straight games now. When he gets on, he can move. One and two to Andrew McCutcheon. Pirates on their six and four homestand. Played the Phillies, Arizona, and New York. Now they're beginning a six game road trip. They'll be in Cleveland over the weekend. McCutcheon is down on a foul tip strikeout for a one, two, three first for Bud Norris. We are proud to wear these pins during our 2011 MLB on Fox Sports Houston season to support Stand Up to Cancer and their work to fund groundbreaking research that helps accelerate treatment to patients. For more information, please visit StandUpToCancer.org slash Fox Sports. Michael Bourne leads it off. He was out early working on bunting before batting practice today. Field and Culbreth is moving out from behind the plate. Now everything's ready to start. With Over Bay in very tight at first and Wood in close at third. Make sure the goaltenders are ready before you drop the puck. <laughs> a ball for Michael, a 280 hitter with one homer, 21 driven in for Michael Bourne. It's no balls, two strikes. Michael has hit 333 on this homestand, going nine for 27. Comes in on him and Karstens has a one ball, two strike count. Karstens has a very good ERA under three, but his record is a losing one at three and four. Up the middle and the shortstop, Sedano, cuts across, makes an excellent play, one out. The starting lineup is brought to you by Xfinity. It's Michael Bourne in center, it's Clint Barmas at shortstop. Hunter Pence in right, Carlos Lee in left, Jeff Kepinger second base, Brett Wallace first, Chris Johnson third, Carlos Corporan. Catcher and Bud Norris pitcher. Jeff Carstens is the fifth starter for the Pirates, and you couldn't ask much more from a fifth starter with the numbers he's put up. You look at his last three outings, very solid stuff. 19 innings, just three earned runs allowed, and only one walk. Strike to Clint Barmas. 218 is his average. Three homers, eight runs batted in for Clint. It's a one ball, one strike count. Arstens has allowed just seven earned runs in his last six starts. He 
get strike two and it's a one ball two strike count. A little baby cut fastball right there. He's not a particularly hard thrower but he's got a nice mix of pitches. He throws both curveballs and sliders has a straight change up and he'll sink. The fastball as well as cut it. It's two and two. Karstens is one and two lifetime against Houston with a 6.17 ERA for five games. Two hopper Brandon Wood. Two out for Karstens. The Pirates defensively tonight. Tabata McCutcheon, the speedster in center. Garrett Jones is the right fielder. Brandon Wood has played solidly at third base. Ronnie Cedeno, Neil Walker, Lyle Overbay round out the uh, infield. And Michael McHenry, as Brownie mentioned, the Pirates are going very deep in that depth chart with the catching situation. They just picked up McHenry in a trade from the uh, Boston Red Sox not long ago, making his third start. Hunter Pence has a 23 game hitting streak, a 406 average during that stretch. Best ball good for strike one. Had a big day yesterday. Hit his ninth homer. He's driven in 50 after a four RBI game yesterday. While his batting average is 325. How's that one back? And it's 0 2 to Hunter. If I'm pitching against a guy who's got a 23 game hitting streak, I'm trying to throw strike one and then expand because I know he wants to swing the bat. Good point. The longest active streak in the majors, second longest this year. Liner to right, turning around Jones for the third out. And it's nothing, nothing after one. Insurance report card now showing you the big disparity between home and road ERA for Bud Norris. 2.21 at home, 6.43 on the road, a difference of 4.22, fourth largest difference among starters in baseball. An early candidate for the uh, Dorothy Gale, there's no place like home award. <laughs> it's been going on with Bud on the road. Do you detect anything? No. Umpires. There's a home there's a home field bias by umpires. You know, blame it on that. <laughs> That's right. You brought that up the other day. Neil Walker at 252 has eight homers, 42 driven in. Ball one to Walker. He's ninth in the league and runs batted in. Big part of the Pirates offense. He's hit safely in his last nine road games. Bad news for him is they're coming off a homestand. <laughs> One ball, one strike. The Pirates have a winning road record of 17 and 15. What a difference a year has made in this ball club away from home. Last year, the Pirates on the road were 17 and 64. They've already equaled their total for last season in road wins. One and two. 
Neil Walker drove in 66 last year for the Buckos. He's 25 years old. First round pick in 04. The switch hitter is his better side. He hit an opening day grand slam. First grand slam of his career. Three balls, two strikes to Walker. Last time a Pirate hit an opening day grand slam was Roberto Clemente, 1962. Neil Walker says he owes his very existence to Roberto Clemente, who told his father Tom not to make that flight to Nicaragua, which crashed. Liner to left field, that's in for a hit for Walker. He leads off the second inning with a single to left, and that gets Jones to the plate with a man on. And it's been uh, quite a turnaround for this Pittsburgh club. It's the game below 500, fourth in the central. Here's that road record Brownie referred to. Team ERA, eighth best in Major League Baseball. And uh, look what happened last year, had an ERA of five. That was dead last. And 23 and 40, June 13th of 2010. So you got to believe as the Pirates finish 500 or better, Clint Hurdle will get a lot of consideration for manager of the year. True. Garrett Jones with six homers, 19 runs batted in. Not matching his pace of last season so far. This one gets by Corporan, and that means Walker takes second base. Probably will be a pass ball. We'll wait and see. Wild pitch. Didn't I'm with you, Brownie. Didn't see it bounce. Let's see if it did. Can't tell from that angle. Yeah, it's got to be caught. Mm -hmm. That's on the catcher. Regardless of how you call it, that's that's on the catcher. True. That's on the umpire. That missed call. Two balls. We're just, <laughs> just going to sit up here and assign blame all night. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> it's not on the umpire because Fox Tracks brought to you by Steel says you are wrong, TV man. That ball was not in the strike zone. My heartfelt apologies to Field and Colbert, the home plate umpire. Please return his record to impeccable, unscathed, and perfect so far tonight. So his field and percentage is 1,000. Mm -hmm. Ripped on a line right field corner. Hunter Pence over to play it. Walker around third headed for the plate. One to nothing Pirates on the RBI single by Jones. He turned on a 3-0 pitch and rammed it into right. 20th run batted in. Yeah, I like the uh, green light there given to uh, Garrett Jones. You watch your lefty swinging a Bud North. Right handed hitters hitting a buck 74 off Bud. So anybody who swings from the left side, you're going to want him to be aggressive in a fastball count. And especially in an RBI situation. Jones aboard. Lyle Overbay, the batter. Overbay, the first baseman, has five homers. He's driven in 25 with a 236 batting average for Lyle. 34 years old, former Diamondback and Brewer. He looks at strike one. Over Bay has a 321 career batting average at Minute Maid Park. Played for Toronto last year and drove in 67 for the Jays. One ball, one strike to Over Bay. The Pirates. In road series are 7 2 and 1. 750 winning percentage in road series, tied for the best in the majors. Quite a different Pirate Ball Club this year. These two teams played three games earlier this season in Pittsburgh. Pirates winning two of the three. Lefties are hitting 294, right handers 174 against Bud Norris. Strike makes it one and two. Walker, the switch hitter, started with a single. Jones, a left handed batter, followed. It's a perfectly placed slider. You see it right there, number three, right on the corner at the bottom of the knees. Over base. Kind of Brett Wallace like. He's got pretty good opposite field power. 
Um, not like a lot of lefty hitting guys that, that like that ball down and, and will go down and lift it. More of a line drive gap hitter. Runner going. Corporan's throw bounces and off the glove of Barmas safe at second base. A steal for Jones, his third and four tries. Among the early work that was going on before batting practice today, the catchers were working on throwing to second base. Barmas was able to block that ball with his glove hand and prevent any further advance. Bay takes strike three. Third strikeout for Norris. Coming back to that slider this time, the back door variety. Settling in over the outer third. Now the newcomer at catcher, Michael McHenry, 26 years old from Knoxville, Tennessee, drafted by the Rockies in 06 in the seventh round. And Red Sox traded him to the Pirates on Sunday. He started last night. Popped up on the right side. Brett Wallace over toward foul territory. Takes care of that one. McHenry was 0 for 8 last year with the Rockies. Now 0 for 4. So still looking for his big league hit. And it's Brandon Wood. Pedro Alvarez is among those nine on the DL. JD mentioned earlier. Brandon Wood filling in at third with two homers, 11 runs driven in, and a 231 batting average for Wood. Formerly with the Angels, they'll put him on intentionally to work to Karstens, who is two for 20. A lot of activity around here today during batting practice with Ed Wade meeting with the media, and then Brad Mills, and then Doug Brocale. Bench coach Al Padrique talking strategy here with Mills after the intentional walk. Brad Arnsberg had signed a two year contract over the winter. To come back to the Astros and was dismissed during the day today. So Brocale is taking over for tonight as we mentioned uh, what tomorrow night will bring who knows. And Doug said uh, you know it's never particularly been his ambition. Be a major league pitching coach. He'll just have to see how it goes. He's been doing all the study he can today to get ready for tonight's game. Talking with Brad Myers now. Now Karstens. That strike one. And, and, you know this intentional walk is. Uh, you know typically early in the game like this you, you don't want to put men on base and set up a potential big inning. But Woods been swinging the bat pretty well. I'm guessing that's what drove that decision to go ahead and put him on and go after Carson's and the fact that Carson's has been pitching so well. And if you feel like you're up against a guy who, who you know, might pitch a, a game where you're not you're not able to put some runs together then you're you played a little bit more cautiously in the early innings. That run out at second base becomes much more important. Line foul. Now obviously, there's a downside if Carson's reaches. The lineup turns over, and they could put together a big two-out rally. But Bud's got the jump on him. No balls, two strikes, two outs. This is where you just, you just count on your players to execute. For Brad Mills, you think Bud Norris ought to be able to put away Jeff Carson's. One and two. Brandon Wood, who got the intentional walk, has hit 344 in his last 12 games with two homers, five runs batted in. So he's at first watching as the 1 2 pitch comes from Norris to Karstens. And he punches one on a line, caught, and Keppinger's there for out number three. One run scoring on two hits, two runners stranded. Pirates one, Astros nothing.
Pirates leading at one nothing as we move to the bottom of the second. Hey fans, don't miss your chance to catch the Boston Red Sox at Minute Maid Park this summer for an interleague series July 1st through 3rd. On Sunday, July 3rd, the first 10,000 fans to the 105 game will get a Brett Myers bobblehead. To get tickets for that game and all games of that series, of course, go to Astros.com. Brownie, back to you. Thank you, Bart. There is ball one to Carlos Lee. One to nothing Pirates. Lee at 269 with five homers. Has 35 runs batted in. His average has been coming up. There's a strike making it one and one. Carlos has been on base in 14 games in a row. And in his last 22 games, he's hit 329. Grounds that one foul. Third base side for a 1 2 count to Carlos Lee. Carlos had a good series in Pittsburgh when the Astros lost two of three. Going five for 12, driving in a couple. Little guy gets one early. Here we got to meet little Dirk tonight, Larry Dirker's grandson. Cute kid. Yeah. yeah Dirk's here, and Bart's going to be talking to Dirk here in a little bit. Backhanded. Sedano sets up, throws, gets out number one. Carson to three ground ball outs. And then the Pence fly ball to right field. There's Larry. He'll tell us more about those shirts and the uh, trip charity group he's with a little bit later on. Jeff Kepinger, the batter. He was five for 14 in the Atlanta series. Right on the edge. Strike one for Carstens. 295 for Kepinger, one homer. He's driven in six. This is his 11th time in the fifth spot in the lineup. No balls, two strikes. Astros are two and five on this homestand against St. Louis, Atlanta, and this Pirate Club. That's looped out toward right field and looping in for a hit for Kepinger. On the 0-2 count, he found a landing zone. Becomes the first Astros base runner. Carson's left a slider on the inside part of the plate. Kepinger able to pull the hands in and make the late adjustment. That's great high hand coordination. Without any prior knowledge, if we were if the Astros were to have a ping pong tournament, I think <laughs> I'd put my money on Kepinger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's quick hand work. Fred Wallace had quite a game last night. Strike one to Wallace, a 311 hitter. That's the 10th best average in the league. He has four homers. He's driven in 20 runs. And Wallace just squarely met the baseball against Derek Lowe last night with a pair of doubles and two walks. A perfect night for Brett. And he was. Ripping the ball to that left center field alley. And low is trying to pitch him away. Talking with Mike Barnett before BP today about Brett Wallace and Barney said, yeah, you know, we've just been talking about staying back a little longer, letting the ball travel. He thought Brett had gotten into, you know, some bad habits of trying to pull the ball maybe, coming off of it a little bit. Susceptible to the off-speed breaking pitch. Brett and I were talking about Tommy Hansen. <laughs> Sunday, wow. Yeah, he can, he can make anybody look silly. <laughs> I told him Hunter Pence picked the perfect game, although he didn't pick it <laughs> with a hitting streak. If you were to choose a game to sit out, that would have been the one. Hunter was ready to play. Hanson struck out 14. The Braves struck out 17 Astros in that ball game. Carsten's he's a tough guy to figure because. He's got command of all of his pitches. He's you know, fastball, slider, little cutter, change up. He's throwing them all in, in good spots. A great example of a pitcher who's executing a game plan who does not have a blow you away fastball. Right near the right kneecap of Wallace on that foul. Carstens, 28 years old, drafted by the Yankees in 03 in the 19th round. Is from San Diego, went to Grossmont Junior College, and then Texas Tech. Last year he was three and ten for the Buckos. Comes in tight. Two and two. 
His ERA was 4.92 last season. He's trying to curl that slider in under the hands. This version of Jeff Carstens is looking very, very strong to Pirate fans. Their pitching coach is Ray Searage. He has to be liking what he's seeing from Carstens. Carstens was not in the opening day rotation. He replaced Ross Ollendorf, who went on the disabled list. Here's a look at the numbers. Over Bay, Cedeno, and back to Carstens. Three, six, one, double play. And after two, it's one to nothing, Pirates. Anderson Cancer Center making cancer history June 14th 1966 19 year old Larry Durker out duels Hall of Famer Sandy Koufax for a three nothing win over the LA Dodgers. Dirk of course grew up in California and if he was here oh wait here's Larry now almost as if we'd planned it. What do you remember about that day that had to be a thrill for you growing up out there facing Sandy Koufax. Well it was what I remember is that that just about a week before that he beat me in the dome and I was so pumped up I would try to throw harder than him and I couldn't throw a strike and we got out to LA and I said I'm not going to try to throw harder than him I'm just going to try to pitch my best and it worked out a lot better that way. Yeah it must have a three nothing shutout win. Hey you're out here with a group of kids uh, from the Cypher area tell us who these kids are and this one especially. Well, this is Dirk here he's my grandson and uh, this was his first year in T-ball four years old we had kids Right on up through 13, 14, I think. Uh -huh. And a bunch of kids that it was their first year to ever play. It's part of a, a program called Sci Hope, and it's Durker's Champs is just a part of a bigger program in Sci Fair to give kids a better chance. And this, idea. this is the people in charge here. He's our, our head pass. Uh oh. <laughs> Great grab by Hunter Pence right up against the wall. As usual. As usual. All star Hunter Pence. That's right. All right, let's talk to some of the guys that are in charge. Your name? I'm Ray Hughes. I'm the director of uh, Durker's Champs, and Larry and I um, started working on a program because we, we wanted to give kids an opportunity to be in an excellent baseball environment that was a positive experience for them where they could enjoy the game and have fun and have coaches that really cared more, more, more than just about baseball, yeah. about helping them become young men who grew up to be successful people. Yeah. Well, that's terrific. Now, guys, they thought they were going to be able to field a, a couple of teams out of this group. They held tryouts, and you ended up with how many teams? We were hoping to get three teams. We announced the clinic a week ahead of time. 150 kids showed up, and we got 13 teams entered into the Cy Fair League. So youth baseball is alive and well, especially when Larry Durker's involved. Back to you guys. Yeah, great story. Thank you, Bart. Good to see Dirk again out here and little Dirk. Ronnie Cedeno, the batter, after that good catch by Hunter Pence on Tabata's deep drive to right field. Now the count's one and two on Cedeno. Cedeno hit the fly ball 
that Hunter caught sliding as he came in earlier. Now back remind you of Tony Pena any behind the plate when you see the catcher for throw that leg out. Yeah. Out. yeah. He gets way down with that low target. Pitchers used to like that when Tony Pena did it with nobody on base. Tigers lead the Indians 3 nothing there in the top of the sixth at Detroit with Justin Verlander pitching. No hits allowed. 3 5 by Verlander. It's two balls, two strikes. Yankees are scoring at home against Texas 6 nothing. bottom of the second inning. Derek Cheater went on the disabled list. Strikeout, and that is number four. Did not make the pitch he wanted to make, but got away with it. As is so often the case, that high slider, hitters just swing right through it. He was trying to go down and away. Andrew McCutcheon struck out in the first inning. He looks at strike one here. His average dropped to 202 on the 28th of April. Since then, he's hit 344. 40 games. One ball and one strike. <laughs> what a talent. He's got 10 home runs, and considering where they play their home games, that's a pretty impressive number. It's a huge ballpark, especially to left field. Upstairs, two and one. The Pirates are leading the league in pitches per plate appearance. 3.91 pitches for each batter on average as he stands in the box. Foul ball out of play and four pitches have been thrown so far here to this hitter. Bud Norris has thrown 49. Great return to the rotation yesterday for Wandy Rodriguez. He weren't went six shutout innings last night giving up just two hits. And he got win number four of the year. But Norris is looking for number five. Foul back. And the Astros have 13 wins from their starting rotation, 29 losses, a 4.65 ERA. Bud trying to become the first five game winner on the Astros this year. And he gets a strikeout. That's number five. It gives him a one, two, three, third. The Pirates lead it one to nothing. By your local Ford dealers, Texas Ford dealers, by AT&T, we think possible. 
and buy steel for defendable trimmers and lightweight blowers, visit steeldealers.com. One nothing Pirates. Chris Johnson leads it off. Home third inning. Take a strike one. 231, six homers, 28 runs batted in for CJ. He's hitting 289 in June so far. As I went back, and it's no balls, two strikes. It's kind of been the game so far for Karsten's just getting the jump on the Astros hitters. 28 pitches, 21 of them for strikes. Gets ahead and he'll take a shot upstairs and then he'll go right back down. So in the slider way, also a good little change up down and away to the righties. And there's a curveball. And he gets a strikeout. That's number one for him. He's walked only 12 in 67 innings. There's one in his last four starts. And I believe it was intentional. Carlos Corporate with two hits and nine at bats. Tries to reach with Bud Norris coming up next. Even though Karstens has a major league record of 15 and 31, there's a drive to right center field. And on the run, there's the catch by Jones. Karstens is looking a whole lot better than a guy who's 15 and 31 with a 4.73 ERA. Now facing Bud Norris. Ball had backspin and a little hang time. I didn't know if Jones was going to get there or not. Ultimately able to put it away fairly easily. Two quick outs for Karstens. Norris is two for 22. For no 91 average, he has three runs batted in. Bud had hits and runs batted in in two of his first four starts. There's ball one. It's Milwaukee two, the Cubs nothing there in the third in Chicago. Randy Wells going for the Cubs tonight, and the Brewers. After that good performance against the St. Louis Cardinals, hope to keep it going. One ball, one strike, or two and one rather to Norris. Milwaukee and St. Louis currently tied for the top spot in the NL Central, 38-29. Norris puts it in the air, watching the flight of it outside the left field line. Carson got a little uh, careless with that fastball, but he's got the opposing pitcher up there. Normally you're willing to take a shot over the fat part of the play, but despite the fact that Bud's only got a couple of hits, he, he could swing it. Tied up on that one, he grounds. And there's Overbay throwing to Karstens for a one, two, three, third and a one-nothing pirate lead through three.
Trip Minute made, and we want to remind you, baseball fans, that Chevy is proud to support youth baseball leagues in your local community. If you'd like to learn more about Chevy youth baseball programs, go to youthsportswired.com. Bill, back to you. Thank you, Bart. It is one nothing Pirates, as you mentioned. Jones with the RBI single, scoring Walker in the second inning. And the Buccos trying to reach 500 for the season, 32 and 33, come up here now. In the fourth inning with Walker Jones and Overbay batting against Norris. And remember Walker got into scoring position on that. Uh, well, it was ruled a wild pitch. Could have easily been called a pass ball, but kind of a free 90 feet for Walker going from first to second, and then Jones drove him in with that base hit to right. Otherwise, the Pirates might not score. There's ball one to Walker. Walker is now 5 for 11 this season against the Astros. He came into this uh, 339 career hitter against Houston. Neil takes that one for a strike. It's 1 and 1. Neil, a switch hitter, a former catcher from Pittsburgh. His father, Tom, pitched with Montreal, Detroit, St. Louis, and California. 280 from the left side for Walker. And uh, just 189 as a right-handed hitter. Seven of his late, uh, seven of his eight, excuse me, home runs have come from this side of the plate. So far more dangerous as a lefty, as is the case with most switch hitters. After the All-Star break last year, Walker drove in 54 runs, and that was as many as Albert Pujols, tied for third in the National League. Clint Farm is coming in for a little rosin. Dry off his hand. Three innings, two hits, one run allowed by Norris with five strikeouts. And this is a more typical Bud Norris outing. The last time he, he had the one hitter, but only a couple of strikeouts. Yeah, that was an unusual game for him last time. Five walks, two strikeouts, and eight innings. High to right field, Hunter Pence waiting. Moving in a little bit. And it's one out. With Garrett Jones following. Jones leads the Pirates and Homers since the beginning of 09 with 48. There is some buzz that with interleague play coming up on the road for the Pirates this weekend at Cleveland, they might be calling up. Minor League Player of the Year last year, outfielder Alex Presley. Jones with the RBI single in the second, made it one nothing. Presley's having another good year for Indianapolis. He came up for a time last year with the ability to use the DH. Clint Hurdle admitted that uh, he was thinking about some things. Didn't say exactly what they were, but people are speculating that that might include Alex Presley being in the lineup this weekend. Yeah, you can afford to do that. You can call up a hitter and, and send one of your other position players out because you don't need as deep a bench when you play in the American League parks. You know, double switching and things of that nature because you don't have to worry about hitting for your pitcher. Well, the Astros after the Thursday afternoon finale of this series, by the way, the game's on my 20 at 1 o'clock Thursday. We'll go to L.A. Then they'll be on the road in an American League City, Texas. Strike makes it 3-1. We'll get the latest on the uh, McCourt situation in L.A. when we're out there. See how that controversy is proceeding. They owe uh, Manny Ramirez about $9 million here at the end of June. And a lot of speculation as to whether they'll be able to meet that responsibility or not. Carlos Lee comes over toward the line. And that one loops in for a hit. Jones gets a pop fly single. And he is two for two. Scattered booze for this one. Just a lazy fly ball to the left. And Carlos had to make a de determination whether he could make that play or not. And if he gets too close and doesn't catch it, it's going to go by him for extra bases. So the fans see him break down to play it on a hop, and that's why the booze. But if he'd sold out, come up short, and the ball rolled to the wall, and then they would have booed him for that. It's kind of a no win situation. Over Bay backs away. He struck out looking in the second. Hey. 
looks at strike one from Norris. Bud with that 2.21 home ERA really has excelled here at Minute Maid Park this season in his career. He's 12 and 8 in this ballpark with a 3.76 earned run average. One ball, one strike. Giovanni Gallardo's on the mound for Milwaukee, leading two to nothing in the bottom of the third at Wrigley tonight against Randy Wells. St. Louis six, Washington one. They're in the bottom of the fifth at Washington. Albert Pujols and Lance Berkman both have connected for long balls. Number 15 for Pujols, number 17 for Berkman. I mean Garcia pitching for St. Louis tonight. Probably will be able to make that lead stand up the way he has pitched. Unieski Maya is on the mound for Washington. He's out of the game after four and two thirds, giving up six earned runs. That's in for a strike, and it's two and two for Bud Norris. Over, over Bay struck out looking last time up. He takes a lot of pitches. You talk about the Pirates being a patient team, seeing a lot of pitches. He, he's a guy who's always done that. They're going, and the throw. Yes. Didn't look like it, but they got Jones as Barmas reached out to the right, brought the tag back to get Jones. The Astros have not been particularly good with Q on the DL. Uh, Shutting down the running game. Q actually having a little bit of an off year too in that regard. This throw is offline, but strong enough that Barmas can go get it and then come back and apply the tag. Corporan has thrown out two of five now. And the pitch was ball three. Now ball four. So a runner at first, two outs after the second walk of the game for Bud Norris, the other intentional, and it's McHenry batting. Chris Snyder of Houston was the main catcher. He had three homers, 17 runs batted in, and 96 at bats. He's out with back surgery now. Doug Brokale, the new pitching coach, watching the game as it'll be Morton and Hap tomorrow night on FS Houston, and then McDonald and Lyles at 1 o'clock on my 20 Thursday. Overbay has looked at 12 pitches. So far, he's had uh, three two counts at both at bats, a strikeout, and a walk. He's a looker. <laughs> Wonder when he's going to swing. Fly ball to right center. Hunter Pence over and calling. Taking care of out number three. No runs, a hit. A runner stranded. One to nothing. Pirates.
This Father's Day, give Dad the gift of time together for an Astros game at Minute Maid Park. With the Astros Dad's Deal, you get tickets at nearly 50% off any game of your choice against the Red Sox, Rangers, or Rays, and free parking for every four tickets you buy. Pretty sweet deal. For those tickets, go to astros.com slash dad. Back up to Brownie, who's also a dad. Thank you, Bart. And you too. And Michael Bourne just butted foul. Strike one. He grounded out the shortstop in the first inning. He was out early to work on his bunting. Tried to put it into play right here. That pitch was not easy mm -hmm. to bunt. No, rule number one, get a strike, but you know. Better swing at bad pitches sometimes too, so it makes sense that they're gonna bunt at bad balls every now and then. How's that one? It's no balls, two strikes. Karstens has allowed only one base runner, a Keppinger single in the second, but then he got a double play ball from the next batter, Wallace. Astros in a bit of a bind because he's attacking early. He's getting the jump on him, so you, maybe you start thinking about swinging earlier in the count. And then you put yourself in a position where you may give him a lot of quick outs. And the thing about it is he's throwing strike one without pumping a lot of pitches over the heart of the plate. He's picking at corners. Justin Verlander of Detroit has a no hitter through seven with one walk and ten strikeouts. It will be his second this year, third career if he gets it. Three nothing Detroit. Tigers are batting in the bottom of the seventh now. Bourne puts it in the air and the left fielder comes in. Tabata takes care of out number one. And Verlander this year after his first no hitter. Went six no hit innings in his next start. Karstens has thrown strike one to nine of ten batters. Glenn Barmas is number 11. He grounded out on a 2 2 count to third base earlier. There you have it. This would be number three if Verlander gets it. Four more and he'll catch Nolan if he gets it. <laughs> strike to Barmas. Nick Swisher hit his sixth home run. CC Sabathia has been staked to a big 7 0 lead for the Yankees at Yankee Stadium over Texas after three. Two hopper to third. And over to Overbay. Woods throw a little bit off, but it's out number two. Big swing in yesterday's ball game with Derek Lowe on the mound. He tried to elevate a fastball after getting the jump on Hunter. Hunter rode it out of here. Apparently didn't learn a whole lot from that because that's exactly what Carson's did in his first at bat. Kept him in the yard, but a dangerous pitch. Our leaders of the game is brought to you by United. Proud to fly the Houston Astros. Hunter Pence has driven in 19.6 percent of the Astros runs batted in, fourth highest percentage of one player for his team this year. Taking strike one, he lined to right in the first inning. I bet you Matt Kemp is way up on that list. Yeah, he is, uh, I think, the leader. Foul back. No balls, two strikes. 50 runs batted in for Hunter. The Astros have scored 270. Carlos Lee on deck. Karstens with an 0 2 pitch coming. Went high fastball last time. Now they're going to change up down. One and two. Doug Brokale has watched Bud Norris throw four innings and allow three hits and one run. Bud Myers sitting alongside Norris. But the Astros have been scuffling for offense tonight. That's driven to center field. McCutcheon back in the fourth inning. Parsons continues a very strong game. A one hitter through four and a one nothing lead.
Pirates up one nothing. Time for our progressive fan of the game. This time it's fans, uh, and you may recognize the Lopez family. They are Olympic champions. Uh, we have a silver medalist, a two-time gold medalist, bronze medalist from the 08 games. Guys, great to see you at Minute Maid Park tonight. What are you, what are you guys up to preparing uh, for another round of Olympic qualifications, right? We leave a week from today uh, to, uh, to Istanbul first to get acclimated, and from there we'll go to Azerbaijan. That's uh, a lot of travel as you're trying to also prepare. Is that difficult? No, you know, we've come accustomed to it, traveling, and we always go there at least 10 days before the actual competition to get acclimated to the time difference. But we're really looking forward to this, the World Olympic qualifiers, so we have to place top three in order to go to the Olympic Games. And so we're ready, we're geared up, and ready to go. Well, this guy's already won two golds. We got a silver, we got a bronze, so uh, they're, they're ready to go, trust me. So we have a bag to, to make you the progressive fan of the game. There's only a few things in here, so you guys have to fight over it, and that's going to be one heck of a fight. Back to you, Brownie. <laughs> Taekwondo. Nice. Very, very well done. Wood behind in the count, 0 and 2. After drawing the attention of Walk early, gets that in the air, and Michael Bourne backs up. And right in front of the wall, it's a long out number one here in the fifth inning. Wanted to go way upstairs with the fastball, left it in the strike zone. And Wood showing a very quick bat. And that swing of the bat, and the way Carson's is pitched, further justifying the intentional walk that was issued to Wood back in the second inning. Carson's then. Lined out to second base after that intentional pass with a couple of men on base. Norris delivers ball one. Four players from the Astros double A affiliate Corpus Christi been named to represent the South in the Texas League All Star game. J.D. Martinez, Vladimir Sutil, Xavier Cedeno, and Dallas Keuchel. One ball, one strike. Well, back and it's a one ball two strike count now. And the Astros have signed 27 of their draft picks so far this year along with six non drafted free agents. It's going to take some time for their number one pick George Springer from the University of Connecticut they feel to sign. He's been banged up so they're going to let him heal a little bit first. Tap foul but due to the usual protracted negotiations with first round picks and the need for the slotting system to have some time to take effect. You know they'll probably wait until the 12th player drafted signs. The guy right behind him. So that his value can be more accurately determined that sort of thing. Or the guy right in front of him. Still one ball two strikes. We saw uh, Tal Smith had a video of a, an excellent catch that Springer made in that uh, super regional over the weekend for Connecticut. Going back in center field. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a heck of an, an athlete. Foul tip strikeout. That's number six. Indians got a hit off Verlander in the eighth. That swing was an afterthought. <laughs> Orlando Cabrera of the tribe broke up that no hit bid by Verlander in the eighth inning. Now Tabata on a line drive right field. Picked up on a bounce. Hunter Pence gets it back in. That is hit number four. They've all been singles for the Buccos. Tabata with 14 steals in 19 attempts. Has reached and it's Cedeno following. He hit a fly ball to right and he struck out. Well, two outs. And Cedeno being a guy who doesn't hit for a lot of power, I suspect Kapital will be looking for an opportunity to try to steal second base here. But can counter that with that quick pickoff move that he's got. One of the best in the business. Strike, and it's 0 1 to Cedeno. Phillies four, Florida one at Philadelphia, bottom of the third inning. Chris Volstead trying to snap the fish out of the doldrums. But Ryan Howard hit his 14th homer and Chase Utley added number three. Oh man, Utley's starting to hit. 
Yeah, he is. The Philly club has struggled to score runs, but uh, if he gets it going. Lineup takes on a different feel. It really does. Hanley Ramirez returned to the lineup for the fish tonight, leading off. He is 0 for 2 so far. He's been out for a while with an injury. Back. Runner going, swing and a miss. Corcoran with the throw, and it's a strikeout, so the play at second does not matter. The inning already over with no runs, one hit, one man left. It is one to nothing, Pittsburgh. Du jour, and this one involves the Pirates. After their great star Roberto Clemente was killed in the offseason plane crash following the 72 season, who replaced him on opening day 73 Boy. in right field for Pittsburgh? Which is this? That is not correct. Okay. Here's ball one to Carlos Lee, grounded out. Boots says Manny Sanguian. Well, Boots gets a. He is right, actually. Zisk played more games there that season. However, it was Sandia, normally a catcher, who actually started opening day. Very and nice. 59 boots. games in the outfield. Over Bay comes over, but that one's out of play. Well done, Boots, because we think of Manny as a catcher. And here it is. Wow. This is for those of you watching at home who can't hear me say this. The trivia answer is Manny Sanguin. Never, I would have never guessed Manny Sanguin. No. He actually caught, or he actually played the outfield 59 games that year. And never played it the next year, he didn't play any. Interesting. Once they got this. That's a great question. Two I was going to go with three. nobody. I thought it was a trick question that <laughs> they started the game with it vacant, you know, and then sent somebody out there. Yeah, kind of honoring Clemente. I haven't reverted to trick questions yet. Well, actually, <laughs> as that pop up is on the infield and Carson's is going to move out of the way, and it's caught by Wood, it's out number one. Actually, there was a game, Steve Blass said, when they did start a game without a right fielder. Because he said, Flamini used to wait until the last minute to put on his uniform. And Blass wasn't pitching that day, so he decided he'd pull a little joke on him and steal his uniform from his locker. So there he was, five minutes before game time, looking for his uniform. And uh, Blass was hiding it from him. And the game had to be held up until he could get it on. Capinger rips one. Foul. Yeah, that's, that's got a good story. Umpires though could last <laughs> last laugh could be on blast. They'd say, "No, you just go ahead and play with eight defielders." <laughs> that's right. It's a 105 game today. Whether you got nine out there or not, we're starting. <laughs> Roll to second. Walker on to first. Two outs. Kepinger is the only base runner for the Astros. That was in the second on a single. So Carsten's into a very nice groove, and he'll face Wallace next. Wallace bounced into a 3 6 1 double play in the second inning. 
strike throwing machine, Jeff oh. Carstens. Very impressive high percentage of strikes to balls for Carstens. That's strike one. Wallace with four homers. One hit allowed by Carstens. No walks. Upstairs with that one, it's one and one. Now Brett said it is helping him to face pitchers that he has seen maybe a little bit last year, or earlier this year now. Get more of a book on them. One and two. This guy's flat out dealing. He is. Well, he pitched seven shutout innings in his last start and got no decision. He knows exactly what he wants to do. Great tempo. The start before last, he went seven innings, gave up one run to the Phillies. Got no decision in that one. Our pitchers obviously have not been uh, affected adversely by the fact that they've used so many different catchers. That's always a concern, and the Astros have had to deal with the same thing. In the right field for a Wallace hit. Hit number two for the Astros. Left handed hitters 297 against Karstens to righties 221. Stayed back long enough on this changeup. Started to go, but he kept the hands back and just strong enough to turn that bat over and yank it into right field. Chris Johnson comes up with a base runner and two outs. He struck out in the third inning. Jair Jurgens has given up four runs and five and a third for Atlanta tonight. With the Mets playing in Atlanta. Sharp breaking pitch, good for strike one. Got it to Nice, goes for the Mets. Jose Reyes, three for four tonight. He's hitting 348 now. In the air outside the right field line. And out of play. And just like that, Carstens is 0 2 on another hitter. Mr. Automatic when it comes to going 0 and 2. <laughs> Reyes plays these days. His, his agent's probably going cha ching, cha ching. Yeah, you his know value it. is skyrocketing. He's really healthy is. again and having a monster year. Boy. This is the 8th 0 2 count for Karstens. Wallace took off, but uh, let's see. They call time or a balk, or that's a balk. Karstens called for his first balk of the season, and Wallace is at second base. Game like this, you got to take advantage of every little opportunity. And Carson's forgot he had a base run. He's had so few of them tonight. <laughs> he went from the full windup. He sure did. That's a brain cramp. Uh, now the Astros have a man in scoring position and an 0-2 count. First runner to second base for Houston. And CJ who's driven in 28 would love to tie it right here. You might think that's just a lack of concentration but it may be more than anything just being so focused on the hitter because he's been so good tonight. Got all about the base runner. Curveball got him on strikes. Strikeout number two after five. One up.
Houston is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. New rapid rewards, unlimited reward seats, and no blackout dates. By Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu any time of day. And by Gullo Automotive, treating you like family. Here's Bill Brown and Jim Bichet. And we've been looking at Bud Norris throwing the ball very well tonight, Greg. And seven punch outs for Bud Norris tonight. He came out of the uh, shoot very good. First inning had command of that slider down. Got away with a couple of mistakes, but for the most part, it's been uh, vintage Bud Norris. Good heater, good hard slider. A lot of strikeouts. Harston's a little bit better. That bouncer goes foul. McCutcheon with strike one. He has struck out both times tonight on a 12 game hitting streak. Just two singles allowed by Karstens, four singles allowed by Norris in one run. Off speed pitch floats high, and it's a one ball, one strike count. Kutchin has had bad swings at the slider tonight. Ultimately, that's what Bud would try to put him away with again. Carlos Lee comes over. Chris Johnson went high for it, but couldn't stop that single to left. And now a 13 game hitting streak by McCutcheon. Did come back with a slider. This one stayed on the plate. McCutcheon put a good swing on it. McCutcheon's first three years statistically compare favorably to Barry Bonds. Pirates would be happy. They would settle for that. I bet they would. Neil Walker watches the throw go over to first. Collision there. Cutchin might have been kneed by Wallace. As the ball trickled out in the other direction. Might have been kneed by Wallace or nailed by the ball. That could have been it too. Might have been drilled by Norris. Yep. Get a little something, a little, little ball in the hip, a little knee in the forehead, whatever it takes. He's a speedy man. You got to hold him down. You got to attack him on multiple fronts. Baseball is a contact sport. Eleven steals from McCutcheon. He's been caught five times. Walker singled, took second on a wild pitch and scored. The Jones hit in the second inning. He's one for two. Strike one to Walker. Tampa Bay leads Boston two to nothing. In the last of the eighth inning now at Tampa Bay. Justin Ruggiano hit his third home run. It came off Tim Wakefield. James Shields is pitching the shutout against the Red Sox. That's something. Bring out that club. One ball, one strike. Yeah, they've been on a tear. They just scored about 40 runs in a weekend series in Toronto and won nine in a row. But the Rays have taken nine of their last 12 from Boston. Looped over shortstop into left center field. Single for Walker. Cutchin's hurting. He's hurting. Okay. I'm not moving well. And now on a second base, squatting down. I don't, you know, saw that ball hit him, but I don't think that's the real issue. I think he tweaked something as he went back into the base. The yeah. hip or back or hammy or something. Not running well at all. And now the Pirates are going to determine whether he should come out of this game or not. Clint Hurdle out with his head trainer, Brad Henderson, to examine the speedy McCutcheon. Yeah, that just didn't look good to them at all. It's the right rib cage area, apparently. That's what Brad Henderson is feeling on McCutcheon. It's like that's where the ball hit him, maybe, but he may have also done something else in addition to that. And the ball hit him lower, right? yeah. just the way he went in. Yeah, it could have been stretching yeah. to get to the bag that stretched it. I mean, this guy's got 
probably 1% body fat. And solid as a rock. Muscles on top of muscles. Meanwhile, uh, Doug Brocale makes his first trip to the mound as pitching coach, and we check the Twins. Maybe they can get back in it. They're eight and two. Big Poppy 400 this month. Ray, as you talked about, Kyle Drayback didn't know that he was sent down to AAA. Huh? Well, I, I, you know, I've seen rumors a while ago that it may happen. He struggled with his command. Doug a lot Brocale. of walks. Okay, was asked in the interview with the media, "What are you going to say when you go to the mound?" He said, "I don't know." Jones is the batter. He's two for two with an RBI. Yeah, it's funny because you know you take a guy like Doug who's been around the game forever as a player now moving upstairs with the Astros but it's still it's a different job and it's a job you've seen a lot of other people do but until you, now it's your position you're not sure exactly how to handle it. Mm -hmm. One on one he said well the only thing I can tell you is from when I was a pitcher and you know how I was. The pitching coach always tried to calm me down, so that's probably what I'm going to try to do. <laughs> 90 pitches for Bud Norris. Two balls and a strike. And it happened very quickly. And uh, who knows what tomorrow will bring, but for now, it's Doug Brocale as the Astros pitching coach. Yep, he's just there to. Help Brad Mills through the night. Yesterday is dead and gone. Tomorrow's out of sight. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Chris Christopherson. Who else sang that song? Two balls, two strikes. I don't know. Never know. It's my favorite version. That's a good change up there. Up a little bit, but had a little fade on it. Well, a critical time here with the Pirates. Leading one nothing and two men on nobody out for Bud Norris. Hit a spot. He got a swing and a miss on that pitch in the dirt. Struck him out. One out. That's eight strikeouts. Okay. Yep. Pound the mitt. There's one. One down. Two to go. It was August 14th of last year when Bud struck out 14 Pirates in seven innings to set the Minute Maid Park record. A record which has just been equaled by Tommy Hansen in seven innings on Sunday with Atlanta beating Houston 4 1. Overbay has struck out looking and he's walked. Let's see if he swings this time. Might swing early now there's an RBI situation. Yeah. He does. See, that's, that's, and that's the advantage you get. Is if you're patient and you work walks, you see a lot of pitches. A lot of times you'll ultimately get a good pitch to hit on OO, and he did. He got a fastball out over the plate, up a little bit. He just got beat, couldn't get to the fastball. 17% of the time, he's bounced into a twin killing. You see that from a lot of smart hitters. Patient early in the game, then they get an RBI chance and they're ready to hit. Now that 17% would be above major league average, wouldn't it? What was that? 17 percent. He's hit into double plays when there's been an opportunity. I would say, yeah, that seems pretty high. One and one. With McCutcheon and Walker, the base runners. Doug Brocale hoping Bud Norris could get a big pitch here. Going to miss, makes it one and two. Now Doug has a lot of confidence. Manager Ed Wade has a lot of confidence in Doug because quite often Doug will be in the general manager's booth here for home games and they do a lot of talking. Doug's not afraid to share his opinion. The first thing he did was, did was go out to the bullpen and and work with uh, one of the Astros starting pitchers throwing a bullpen before he talked with the media today just on a crash course. Earlier he was watching some video and looking at some numbers. Try to get up to speed. It's two and two. With those numbers for Bud Norris. I 
Yeah, so a lot of things changing here for Bud Norris. He has a new battery mate, Corporan. He has a new pitching coach. But that is the life of a major leaguer quite often. 97 pitches for Bud. Getting to that change. The constants. Which you really have to concern yourself with. 60 feet 6 inches to home plate, 17 inches wide, that white dish. And make your pitches. Swing and a miss, and he got over Bay to expand. And he got strikeout number nine. Michael McHenry from Middle Tennessee State is 0 for 2. And 0 for 5 as a Pirate and 0 for 13 as a Major Leaguer. Hit 390 and 06 for Middle Tennessee State with 13 homers. That got him a seventh round draft choice of the Rockies. And ball one. Last year at Colorado Springs, he hit 265. Grew up in Knoxville. And used to go to uh, University of Tennessee games, watch Todd Helton play as a kid. Oh. Just notice that uh, star on the right sleeve of the Pirates uniform. Chuck Tanner. Okay, I that's believe right. that's right. Well, Tanner okay. passed away this, this winter, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, or the spring. Not too many months ago. That's what, yeah, number seven. Chuck Tanner, eternally optimistic. Said the best feeling in the world is winning a Major League Baseball game. The second best feeling is losing a Major League Baseball game. He was His optimistic. Position, as long as you're in the game, as long as you're out there putting yeah. on a uniform. Little roller, Corporan throwing to first. And Norris, after giving up back to back singles by McCutcheon and Walker, gets the next three to keep the score one to nothing, Bucks. Day afternoon game this season with the next available date coming up this Thursday as the Astros take on the Pirates at 105. You get a field box ticket and $20 in food and beverage credit for just 45 bucks. Go to Astros.com slash value for those tickets. Guys, back to you. And come out and see Jordan Lyles and James McDonald pitch at 105 on Thursday. Thank you. Here's the first pitch here, and it comes to Carlos Corporan. It is strike one call in a one-nothing ball game. Pirates lead, bottom of the sixth inning. Bud Norris will bat second, and then Michael Bourne. They're looking at Andrew McCutcheon to see if he was going to come out of the game. He went and took a seat on the Pirate bench, but then he did come out to play center. 
One ball and one strike for Karstens, who's given up two singles. And that curve missed for a two one count. A couple of finals are already in. Tampa Bay shutting out Boston four to nothing. James Shields beating Tim Wakefield. Fastball foul back. And Detroit blanking Cleveland four to nothing. A two hitter for Justin Verlander. He's now eight and three. His ERA is 2.66. Who's the best pitcher in the American League? Ooh. Fly ball at the right center field. McCutcheon legging it over. Oh, it would be hard to go against uh, Verlander, wouldn't it? Oh. Would be. This guy's been uh, the best pitcher in uh, the National League tonight, perhaps. Karstens with a, an array of breaking balls, well placed fastballs, nice little changeup that he's thrown to both sides of the plate. Had the Astro hitters off kilter all night long and getting the jump on just about everybody. Just 68 pitches. Norris with a foul ball. Trying to put his way on. Well, let's throw out some other names for you. John Lester's won nine games. He leads the league. Not a bad idea by Bud. You'd have six wins pitching for that club. <laughs> well, you've got to stay in for five, so that's not going to happen. Josh Beckett is the ERA leader, 2.06. Alexi Ogando is 7 0. He's got a 2.10 ERA. That's second best in the league. There are some candidates there. It's What's David one. Price doing this year? Let's Pretty good year. We're going to have to look up his stats. He's among the league leaders in innings pitched and in strikeouts. Not sure how many he's won. Max Scherzer with eight wins. And Jake Arrieta. But Arietta has a high ERA. Yeah. It's a strikeout. Wins are overrated. <laughs> That's three strikeouts for Karstens. The Red Sox had one nine in a row until that shutout loss tonight at Tampa Bay. Jared Weaver, remember, he came out of the gate. Yeah. Unbelievably, he's now seven and four with a 2.24 ERA. Bryce is seven and five with a 351. Mm -hmm. Michael Bourne takes. There's ball one to him. Jeremy Hellickson seven and four with a 303. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. I guess if I had to name the American League All Star starter right now, I'd have to go with Josh Beckett. Okay. Couldn't really argue against that. And he's a local guy, so that would make it fun to watch. And he'll probably pitch here. Who knows when the Red Sox are here in early July? Maybe not. That'd be fun. Foul back, two balls, two strikes. Not fun for the Astros hitters, though, yeah. to face that Red Sox club. You could run into a Beckett and Buckholz and Lester and then follow that up with Hallickson and, uh, <laughs> and David Price. That's right. <laughs> Tampa Bay's coming in, Boston's coming in. <laughs> yeah. Rolled, and the second baseman gets over, and Walker. Makes that play to end the sixth inning with a score one to nothing Pirates.
Moments in MLB All-Star Game history are going head-to-head to determine which is the most memorable of all time. Go to MLB.com slash moments and vote now for your favorite Midsummer Classics and tune into the 2011 MLB All-Star Game on Tuesday, July 12th, 7 p.m. Central on Fox to find out who won. So who's in competition, guys? The Cobra Strikes. There's one nomination. Hunter Pence could be there playing in that all-star game. Dave Parker was yep. the Cobra. That's right. Oh, he made that throw. Okay. And then he get a home run in the same game. One nothing There's, lead here. They're striking. Here's some obscure all-star trivia for you. I can't believe it's not here on the bracket because it was a big moment in all-star game history. Line drive. Carlos Lee over and Carlos. How about that for a sliding catch. Yeah. Fans that were booing earlier are on their feet applauding now. And a one nothing game. El Caballo takes extra bases away from Brandon Wood, who put another good swing on one, further justifying that intentional walk back in the second inning. Walk him every time. We're getting him out. It's hard hit balls. You're right. <laughs> now Carstens. All right. Let's see. Uh, Pete Rose runs over Ray Fawcett. Good play by yeah. El Caballo. Very nice, big fella. Jammed on that one. Karstens grounds it to short. And Farmers takes care of out number two. Fred Lynn's grand slam. Ted Williams walk off. Babe hits the first homer. Cal's perfect script. Reggie's blast. Bo knows baseball. Those are some of the possibilities, Greg. Um. Which one do you like? I'm still uh, debating. Are you? I'm still debating. So uh, these are pairs, right? So you have to pick the winner. Which of these yeah, different things? I'd have to. Voting ends June 18th for so, round one. So I guess I better figure out something pretty quick. Yeah. What does the double dash refer to? Um, not sure. We'll have to look it up online. Okay. What I was referring to is the only catcher's interference in All-Star Game history. Ah. Was called on whom? A certain number seven. <laughs> Correct, sir. <laughs> Biz. Yeah. We've seen several catchers' interferences lately. Right, but the other rest of them are all forgotten. That one is. Well, anything in the All Star. Immortalized yeah. by being in the All Star record. Magnified so much. Barmas to his right. Makes it a 1 2 3 7 for Norris. And very quickly, it's reached seventh inning stretch time with the Pirates up 1 to nothing.
could become memorable later. Our Brown Hens had a great hands in the game. This time a catch by Carlos Lee in left field on the wood line drive. So Wood was walked intentionally in the second inning and then he backed up Michael Bourne deep for the warning track and now sent Carlos Lee over to his right for that sliding play. One nothing Karstens. Here's Clint Barmas. Taking strike one twice he's grounded Wood at third base. Third time around the order. Perhaps that will be the charm for the Astros as they try to solve this 28 year old right hander. Journeyman type guy who's putting it all together here in 2011. Yes he is. Astros are hitting 284 from the seventh inning on to lead the majors. Uh oh now we got another injury oh. issue. Joel Hanrahan is the closer of the Pirates. He's got 17 sa saves. He has not failed in any save opportunities this year. Once again, the Clint Hurdle, Brad Henderson team come out. This time it's for Karstens. The left ankle area, maybe? Knee. No, knee. messing with the knee. Okay. We didn't see something here. Big high leg kick. Plants on that left leg. And then a little hop. Felt a little tweak there. Chris Reesop begins to warm up, a right hander. Well, those guys really watch like Hawks in the dugout. They can see any little movement that's different by a player. Reesop works. Warm up pitches here for Karstens. He's given a thumbs up after one. Clint Hurdle probably wants to see another one. All right. Not going to have to. 29,712 paid attendance. Good crowd on a Tuesday night. And great numbers for Karstens. We go back to work with a 1 1 count on Barmas. Pence and Lee to follow. Takes. It looked a little wobbly finishing that delivery. They will be watching extremely carefully here. Runs that one down and in. It's three balls and a strike. There haven't been many three ball counts with Carson's on the mound tonight. All four base hit right here. This might be the first one, JD. Three, two. Yep. This is the first three ball count he's had all night. It's pretty amazing. Astros are not the most patient bunch. But. It's more of a function of how good he has been. Paul Mahalam is the only Pittsburgh starting pitcher to win a game at Minute Maid Park since August of 07. Fly ball way up high and it's in right center and McCutcheon and Jones are there and McCutcheon calls off Jones. One out. Now it's Hunter Pence and his 23 game hitting streak is on the line. This could be his last at bat tonight. He's lined to right and fly to center. Tied for the fourth longest hitting streak in Astros history. It's not his last at bat tonight. His last one would likely be against Hanrahan. That's <laughs> tough, hombre. Yeah, that's true. And strike one on the breaking stuff. Willie Tavares set the club record 30 game streak in 06. This is the longest streak since then. Art Howe is working tonight. Fly ball, McCutcheon digging back to right center field, and he gets there. For the second out, Art had a 23 game hitting streak. 1981. Hunters 0 for 3. Mm -hmm. Put a pretty good charge in that one. Stays in the yard. There's a pretty good chance McCutcheon's going to run it down. Jeff Kent had a 25 game streak in 04. Eusebio 24. In 2000, Carlos Lee takes and it's ball one. 
Art Howe, Luis Gonzalez, Moises Salou at 23 along with Hunter. Line into left field. Carlos hit that one hard past a lunging Cedeno. Hit number three for the Astros. This has hit a lot of balls hard lately. The line drives and hard ground balls. This ball crushed. <laughs> then you got moving as quickly as possible it appeared and that ball still got by him it was hit so hard. He's aboard with two outs and it's Kepinger. Kepinger looped a single to right center then he grounded out. Clint Hurdle's making the move. Yeah, I think he's just not comfortable with Carson's knee. Mm -hmm. I think he's fearful that, that in favoring that knee he might make a mistake and cost him the ball game. And getting him out of the game now he cannot lose. Either win or get a no decision. This call to the bullpen is presented by Verizon Wireless. Carsten's leaving. Well, the one to nothing pirate lead, two outs, one on in the seventh inning. Back in a moment. Auto fan, come out June 15th for an autograph session with Astros first baseman Brett Wallace and Junction Jack at the Whataburger at 8820 Highway 6 in Missouri City from 11 o'clock to noon. While you're there, you can sign up to be the ultimate Whataburger Water fan and have a chance to win two sweet tickets for the Astros game on September 24th and Whataburgers for a year. Plus, be on the field for batting practice and throw out the first pitch. Don't miss this chance to meet Brett Wallace. At Whataburger. Guys, back to you. He's a fine young man. You'll enjoy it. On the bench, there's the head athletic trainer, Brad Henderson. Hands on hips, looking at a guy who's really pitched well tonight. Jeff Karsten's out of the game after 86 pitches, six and two thirds innings. Chris Resop is warming up. He's two and two, his ERA 4.30. He's made two appearances against the Astros, and he has not retired a batter. He's allowed four hits and five earned runs in those two games this year. He's a strikeout pitcher. He's recorded 36 punch outs and 29 in the third innings. So inherited 26 runners this year. 11 have come around to score. That's not a particularly good ratio. Just we're not aware of all the different situations he's been in. Not all inherited runners are created equal. You come in with the bases loaded, nobody out. That's a lot different than two outs and a man on first, as is the situation here. This is a run a relief pitcher sh certainly should be expected to prevent from scoring. Capitures one for two. Wallace on deck. Maybe some temptation here for Brad Mills to pinch run for Carlos with Jason Bourgeois, but Bouge has had that bad ankle. And Carlos' spot in the lineup could come around again. And if you've taken him out of the game, obviously you've taken his bat out of the game, and he's swinging it pretty well right now. Well, he started to. Edge towards second base there, and then he got back. Tim Wood is warming up. McHenry, the catcher, has had very little big league time. His minor league numbers in terms of throwing out base dealers are quite good.
threw out one trying to steal in yesterday's game. Reese off. Had a good April, but a rough month of May with an 8.380 RA in the second month of the season. 28 years old, formerly with Florida and Atlanta. Well back. No balls, two strikes. Reese up uh, lost the game in Pittsburgh May 6. They came in with a 2-1 lead in the eighth inning. Michael Bourne walk stole a base. Hunter Pence had an RBI double. And he got a blown save. And then two days later. He came in with a 2 nothing lead in the seventh, gave up a homer to Chris Johnson, hit to Bill Hall, Humberto Quintero, an RBI double. He got a blown save again. Two appearances against Houston, two blown saves for Resop this year. Strike three. This time he ends it in the seventh with a strikeout looking on Capinger. Preserved the Pirates 1 nothing lead. In the right by Ronnie Cedeno. Hunter Pence comes in, slides, plays it off to the left, and makes a catch to retire Cedeno for out number two in the first inning. It is still one to nothing. The Pirates got their run in the second inning. Walker singled, took second on what was ruled a wild pitch, scored on a Jones single. And so uh, all the hits in this game have been singles. And we go to the eighth inning with an Ariel Del Rosario. No decisions an ERA of 4.25 coming in. Lately he, it's been a little bit of a bumpy ride for EDR. When he's on his game we get a lot of ground balls with that sinker. He better be on his game tonight because it's a one run ball game. Keep the Pirates right there but Norris outstanding again tonight. Boy if not for that. Wild pitch slash pass ball. I'm just not one to see. Sure. Well, back agreed. in the second, we're probably in a scoreless ball game. So Daniel McCutcheon and Walker in the eighth inning for Pittsburgh. El Rosario wants another baseball. And uh, for what it's worth, if that's a pass ball, that was an unearned run through the second inning. True. Might be changed later on. Sedano hit that fly ball we just saw to Hunter Pence, then he struck out twice. Del Rosario throws and it's strike one. And Ario gave up four hits and three runs to Atlanta in one inning Friday night. He's allowed runs in each of his last three appearances. Slider makes it a 1 1 count. Chop slowly, it's a two hopper to Kepinger. Turns into out number one. Seven innings, six hits, one run for Bud Norris, two walks, nine strikeouts. 
Hurston six and two thirds innings three hits no runs no walks three strikeouts. But did his part tonight. And then some. Hurston's through 87 pitches 63 strikes. Wow is that a high percentage. McCutcheon. Takes a look at ball one. Yeah, and uh, boy, a lot of quality strikes too. Again, it wasn't just a matter of pumping fastballs over the heart of the plate. He was picking at corners and commanding his off-speed stuff. It made it look effortless. He was playing catch out there. He really did. And he has turned it around this year compared to last year's numbers. With an ERA well under three. Two balls, one strike. Clayton Kershaw is pitching tonight for the Dodgers. They're getting ready to start in Los Angeles with Cincinnati in town. San Francisco has a 1 0 lead at Arizona after one against Josh Colmenter. Whoop. That is headed foul. Did you see the foul ball in the highlights by Mike Stanton of Florida last night by chance? I did not. Just barely foul in Florida. Way over the top of the foul pole. It was. Just a monstrous shot. Huh. There's some, uh, <laughs> well, I wonder where that hair comes from. Just look behind her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Some hair to trade. Three balls, oh, two strikes. Stan's a beast. <laughs> he's like he is the, a beast. He's like the John Daly of baseball. Yeah. Yeah, he's. He's not the bad pants. <laughs> There's a one out walk and that could turn out to be trouble if McCutcheon is running. He's 11 for 16 this year. Del Rosario had had 13 straight scoreless appearances now three in a row allowing runs. And it's going to be Walker back. Walker's two for three. Brad Bell's on his way to the mound. He has the lefty Sergio Escalona warming up. He can turn Walker around and he'll be batting right handed and that will be the choice for Brad Mills. Del Rosario out of the game with a score Pittsburgh one Houston nothing back in a moment. in the Arizona desert for one spectacular night in the summer's biggest event as Fox brings you every thrilling moment of the 2011 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Coverage begins Tuesday, July 12th, live from Phoenix at 7 p.m. Central, only on Fox. Got a pitching change, guys. Back to you. Lefty Sergio Escalona as we see the All-Star ballot leaders. And those guys will probably be gathering in the desert. Be hard to overtake them, won't it, uh, JD? You haven't seen the uh, second place voting totals, though. No, the uh, uh, you know I think Jose Reyes could make a surge at shortstop. You know the teams that draw well obviously have a big advantage. So you're going to see the Phillies do really well, and the Cardinals. Not to say, not to say that those players aren't deserving. 
A Walker batting right with a runner going. Here's the pitch, and it's thrown into center field. And now, here's McCutcheon streaking for third base on a stolen base and a throwing error by Corporan. If he had to do it all over again, he'd probably just hang on to it. He was not going to get McCutcheon even with an accurate throw. And that's what happens when you got a, a burner like McCutcheon on the bases. The catcher tries to be so quick and the footwork gets out of whack and then you make errant throws. Now the infield comes in. The pitch was strike one to Walker. Walker's hitting 189 as a right handed batter. Chases that one. It's no balls, two strikes. Walker's a 280 left handed hitter so far this year. Way out of the strike zone to go after that fastball. And that's what you're thinking now if you're Escalona and Corporan strikeout. Keep the ball out of play here with a man on third and one out. Take another shot way up or go way down. Plan B a little more dicey because if the catcher doesn't control that ball in the dirt, they can get a cheap run that way. It's actually the first time the Pirates have had a runner on third. They scored a run. On a single by Jones scoring Walker from second in the second inning. That's where you got to come out of that bullpen and be fully aware of the game situation. And if you end up walking the guy here, it's not the worst thing in the world. He went and struck out. Two outs. Walker seems to be disputing that field and pelt with Paul. Two outs. Yeah, I think his position is aren't you even going to get some help? You're going to take this on your own. And Culver's was convinced he had offered. It looked like he did. Sure looked like it. Well, at that point, it's your last resort as a hitter. Now the infielder's back up, and it's Garrett Jones. He's two for three. He's the only RBI in this game. That's strike one. St. Louis had a six to one lead at Washington. After five, then it was six to two, going to the bottom of the seventh inning, and they're behind now. Ooh, good try. One and two. It's now eight to six Washington after a six run national seventh. I'm wrong again. I said Jaime Garcia would be able to make that six to one lead hold up. Grounded at Capinger. And what nice work by Escalona. Mm -hmm. Strand that runner at third and keep the score one nothing Pittsburgh in the middle of the eighth. You know, a moment ago we were talking about the All-Star Game. Well, you can help send Hunter Pence to this year's All-Star Game by voting up to 25 times at Astros.com. Go to Astros.com and cast your ballot now for your 2011 All-Stars. Vote early and vote often. Vote tonight at Astros.com. Brownie? It's a good idea, Bart. Thank you. It's still one to nothing here. The Pirates lead. 
This Resop got an out for them. Now Xavier Paul's in the game in right field in a double switch. He's batting in the nine spot. And Jones checks out of the game after going two for four with the game's only RBI. We got a pinch hitter, Jason Bourgeois, against lefty Tony Watson, who for his major league career has three games and an ERA of zero. Brady. Fastball slider change up. Fastball 92 to 94 miles an hour. So he's not the standard soft toss and left handed reliever. He can rush it up there a little bit. Come up through the Pirates system. Starting with them in 2007 at Class A ball. Bourgeois pinch hitting for Brett Wallace. Wallace was one for two. One ball, one strike count. You mentioned he had had the sprained ankle. He was scratched from the lineup on Sunday with that. Loops one toward the right field corner. And it's caught by Paul. Been a number of one nothing ball games in Major League Baseball this year. Last year, two, an outstanding year for the pitchers. A couple one nothing ball games last night. Now, that could be it for Watson. After he retired the pinch hitter bourgeois, Chris Johnson's due up next. You mentioned Hanrahan is the closer. He has not missed a save opportunity this year. He has been terrific, but how do they bridge the gap? We'll find out in just a moment with the score of Pittsburgh 1, Houston nothing. Tim Wood becomes pitcher number four in this game for the Pirates. Very interesting story. Tim is throwing in the mid 90s this year. He was a 44th round pick of Florida in 02. This year he was in spring training with the Nationals. They didn't have a Triple A job for him, so the Pirates wound up picking him up, and now he has an ERA of zero for them after getting 13 saves at their Triple A Indianapolis club. So. Uh, then hurdle with these recent minor league call ups and he's not afraid to throw him into the fire here in this one nothing game Watson for a third of an inning and now Wood will get his turn so try to pass the baton down the line ultimately to a Joel Hanrahan their closer this guy 95 mile an hour fastball a slider and a change up to go along with it strike to CJ who has two strikeouts tonight Watson retired bourgeois the only man he faced Reese retired Kepiger the only man he faced. And the quick slider makes it 0 and 2 so this pirate bullpen has fallen right into line with starter Jeff Karstens. CJ struck out twice already tonight and he's uh, about 30 seconds into this at bat and it's 0 2 again. Just can't catch a break. Corporate on deck and beating him with breaking balls. Finishing him off anyway with breaking ball. That was a slider, at least an attempted slider. Didn't do a whole lot. Wood made his debut with Florida in the big leagues in 09, 18 games, and then pitched 26 times again last year with the Fish with a 5.53 earned run average in that season. 
One and two. Had only one blown save for Indianapolis. He was 13 to 14 with a 2.96 ERA. Efron and Melanson getting ready in the Astros pen. Grounder in the left. A hit for CJ. Number four for the Astros. They've all been singles. Pirates have six singles. Brandon Wood, the third baseman, was tight to the line. Trying to take away a double. CJ able to take advantage of that hole. And here comes uh, Matt Downs' boys. He's been good off the bench this year. He sure has. And he has a quick bat, and with this guy's fastball, maybe he can clock one. Downs, 275 average for 69 at bats, has four homers, 17 runs batted in. That gives him a 551 slugging percentage. As a pinch hitter, he's six for 15, one homer, six driven in. Came through again in last night's game with a pinch hit. He said that was on a slider for his RBI pinch double in the sixth. Impressive numbers right there. The Astros has a team hitting 242 in the pinch. Significantly better than league average, which is 213. Jason Michaels is on deck. Pitcher spot due up next. Good stop there by McHenry. And it's uh, one ball, no strike. So they've used six different catchers this year. Yes, they have. They have three guys who are on the disabled list right now. Ryan Dolman has a sprained ankle. Snyder with a back surgery. And Jason Jaramillo is hurt. And he might not be too far from coming back. Jaramillo. They'd use a couple more, and he would be McHenry the eighth. <laughs> Good stuff. Now two and zero, and Downs. I just had this knack for coming off the bench, being able to hit in situations like this this year. One of the most difficult things to do in sports. Yeah, he'll be looking to turn and burn right here on a two-0 fastball. Clint Hurdle can't watch. <laughs> Try by Wood to try to clip that outside corner instead of just throwing it right down the channel. The problem with that, of course, is he's missed and now he's 3 0. And the way Matt Downs has swung the bat this year, I got to believe he's got the green light. Yeah. And his last eight pinch hit appearances, he's 3 for 4 with three walks and he was hit by a pitch. So he's taken his walks as well as his hits and he leads the majors in on base percentage 571 as a pinch hitter. He takes and it's ball four. Check his swing. The appeal went down to Gary Cedarstrom and it's first and second and one out now for another pinch hitter, Jason Michaels, batting for Escalona. He got it started. He wanted to be able to get to that fastball if it was in the zone. Obviously, it was not, and he was able to check. Escalona retired both men he faced and had one strikeout. All the relievers in this game have done well. Jose Barris and lefty Daniel Moskis warming up right now. Uh, this is a, a, a great example of the, the, the way the modern bullpen has worked. If Hanrahan is your best guy, this might be a situation where you'd want to you'd want to use him. Use him for this inning in the ninth, and if he, if he didn't have enough to get the ninth, then hand the ball to somebody else. But that's for another time. Michaels is one for one with a homer off wood. So the change is made, and we'll be right back with a score one to nothing, Pittsburgh.
In the bottom of the eighth, there's one out. Runners at first and second now. And Jose Veras, pitcher number five, comes in the game for Clint Hurdle, who's trying to piece this thing together out of the bullpen. Veras is one and two. His ERA is 3.38. Yeah, he can get you to swing and miss, too. 34 punch outs at 26 and two thirds innings. He's walked a lot, though. 16 walks, three home runs against this big right hander. And two has a good heater. Not a slider. He throws a curveball and a split finger pitch. Jason Michaels is one for 14 pinch hitting this season, a 185 hitter overall with one homer. He's driven in three. Michael Bourne's on deck. That's strike one. Varis worked May 6th and 7th at Pittsburgh, did not give up a run in those two games. Jason Michaels on that leaderboard for pinch home runs. How sweet would that be? One ball, one strike. That would be something else after the struggle this has been offensively for the Astros. They've had only two runners as far as second base. Nobody to third in this game. He takes two and one. And Downs took a four pitch walk. Now two one for Michaels, who singled as a pinch hitter last night. This is only the second at bat for the Astros with a runner in scoring position. Man, <laughs> proud of that heater, boy. He's he is. willing to throw it right over the heart of the plate. First pitch of the at bat, and now this one right there. Jason just couldn't quite get out in front of it. Pirates were swept in the nine game season series at Minute Maid Park last year. Goes to center field, McCutcheon. Two outs. Now born. Clint Hurdle going to trot out there one more time to get his lefty. We're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> All eyes trained on the pirate dugout. Kind of surprising he's not. Well, Veris has got that split finger pitch, which. Uh, it's a good weapon against lefties. Michael Bourne's 0 for 3. We've seen that many managers bring in lefties against Bourne. That's strike one. Michael is hitting 203 against left handers this season. Unhittable. The right handed hitters. Lefty's doing a little bit better, but still 244. Good batting average against for Veras. Better depth on that breaking pitch than he showed on the other ones. Bourne is facing Veras for the first time in his career. A little hanging split finger pitch right here. Those usually go a long way. Peter. One and two. Barris, 29 years old, began his career with Tampa Bay, then he was the Yankee and Indian in Florida. Signed as a free agent in January. He pitched 48 times for the Marlins last year with a 3.75 ERA. Struck out 54 in 48 innings. Bourne takes it and it's ball two.
The Pirate bullpen has a 3.39 ERA, nine wins, 11 losses. That one got away, and now it's a full count, and with two outs, the runners will move. So the Astros get a bit of an edge here. Varmus on deck. Well, especially you know, uh, you know, you could envision Michael Bourne hitting a line drive to left field, and it might be tough to score CJ on a ball like that. But moving with the pitch, that's a huge advantage, and maybe even more importantly, a chance to score from first base easily on a double. Runners go. And it's a fly ball left field line into the corner and caught by Tabata for the final out of the eighth inning. No runs to hit. Two men stranded. We move to the ninth. Pittsburgh one, Houston nothing. You buy the Progressive Insurance Group for a money saving car insurance quote. Call 1 800 Progressive today. We added tonight a few changes. Here's Bill Brown and Jim Bichet. Several changes, in fact, Greg. As Brad Mills has gone to his bench and he used Jason Bourgeois as a pinch hitter. Now Jason stays in to play left field after pinch hitting for Brad Wallace there in the bottom of the eighth inning. Carlos Lee has moved from left field to first base. J.R. Tolls is the catcher. Corporan left for the pinch hitter Downs. And Fernando Rodriguez will do the pitching in the ninth. He's 1 0. His ERA is 2.53. Well, look at the numbers 18 strikeouts, just three walks, and 10 and two thirds. He's allowed a couple of home runs, and that's, you know, that's a kind of a byproduct of the way he pitches. He works up in the strike zone with a four seam fastball, a fly ball guy. That type of pitcher is a little vulnerable to the home run ball, and that's sometimes a bit of a concern. You know, if, if, you know, if you develop into a late inning reliever, pitching in tight games, uh, one swing in the bat could be such a huge difference. Well, Overbay first up against him. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. But you also like those strikeouts. That's a trade off. You know, it's nice to keep the ball out of play too in the late innings of a tight game. It's a good hook too to go with that fastball. Moves back over Bay. There's ball one in tight. The Astros have Barmas, Pence, and Lee do up in the last of the ninth inning. So Hunter Pence will get another shot at extending his hitting streak. One and one. Tim Wood did not retire batter. Gave up one hit, no runs, with one walk, no strikeouts. Now it's a two ball one strike count to Overbay. Fernando Rodriguez working yesterday. Or make it Sunday in the Astros four to one loss to Atlanta with two hitless innings and four strikeouts. Three one. Fernando was two and three at Oklahoma City with a one point two nine ERA there and 13 relief appearances. Lead off walk to Overbay. Most predictable. 
Strikeout walk, strikeout walk, his line tonight. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about McHenry and whether he is bunting. The Pirates are up one to nothing. He's the number seven hitter. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Situation certainly calls for a bunt. Got a one run lead on the road. You're just looking to pad that lead. Chris Johnson's in tied at third base. A lot of times you would question bunting here because you're down towards the bottom of the order and how reliable are the guys coming up behind him to drive in the run but wood has been hot lately and has swung the bat well tonight. And they got Paul now in the nine hole in the lineup not the pitcher. Mm -hmm. A solid thought behind a bunt here. Yeah it's a percentage play. It takes a strike. You got a guy who doesn't have a major league hit, and you, you got a chance for a two nothing lead by giving up and out, even though you are on the road. Nick Leva with signs. And with Hanrahan, the closer, perfect for this season. That would be helpful to him if he could lead yeah. by a couple. I mean, that's what I mean. It's a 90% of the managers, if not all of them in, in this situation, would bunt. He does bunt. Carlos. Going to Kepinger and the sacrifice goes from three to four over Bay to second one out. The mitigating factor there would have been if you just felt like you had no chance to get that run home from second with the next two guys coming up. Mm -hmm. Wood though blistered a line drive to left and Carlos made a sliding catch on him in the seventh inning then he had sent a deep fly ball right in front of the 404 sign in the fifth inning. First time up he was walked intentionally. And it's the lefty hitting Paul in the nine spot on deck, the right fielder. Strike one call to Wood. Yankees are pummeling the Rangers 12 to 4 in the bottom of the seventh inning at Yankee Stadium. Robinson Cano belted his 13th homer. Curtis Granderson hit number 21. Move over Jose Bautista. The Grandy Man. Well, you know the Grandy Man can. One ball, one strike. Clint Barmas, Hunter Pence, and Carlos Lee are due up in the bottom of the ninth against the closer, Joel Hanrahan. It's two and one. Baltimore five, Toronto five. They've played nine in Toronto. Matt Wieters hit number six for the Orioles. Aaron Hill number two for the Blue Jays. In the air foul and out of play. Two and two. Tomorrow night it's game two of this three game series. At 7:05, Jay Happ and Charlie Morton will pitch. Charlie Morton, another reclamation project. He's six and three with a 3.08 ERA. He's had a miserable year last year. He's a pretty good candidate for the Comeback Player of the Year award. Three and two now, and then Thursday on my 20, it's James McDonald and it's Jordan Lyles at one o'clock. Astros hit the road. Over the weekend there in Los Angeles. Next week they'll be in Texas. Brownie will be running a convertible in Southern California with his shades on, cruising around <laughs> Bel Air. <laughs> swing and a miss, a tentative swing. And that's well done by Fernando Rodriguez for out number two. He hooked him good right there. He hooked him. Watch this one. Mm. Good curveball to get a swing like that. Xavier Paul now comes up, and uh, Brad Mills is striding out toward the mound. He might be playing it a little differently as far as mound visits now with the change in pitching coaches. But maybe not. First base is open here. Tabata is on deck. What do you think this is all about? Well, I think it's it's that. I think it's. Uh... 
you know, a little refresh, of course, on Paul, how you want to go after Paul, what his strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and, and one of two things, um, either look, you got a base open. If you get behind him, don't feel like you have to give in. Or Tabata on deck has been swinging it really well, so make sure you go after this guy. Don't don't think along the lines of I got a base open. I mean, that's, depending on how they want to play, you could do, deliver either one of those messages. Paul is a good outfielder. And uh, he's hitting 303 this month. Former Dodger claimed on waivers by the Pirates in April. That's ball one. Sometimes with a young pitcher, you don't want to put too much on his plate in terms of the overall strategy. You know, so you may just go out there and go, look, go right after this guy, trust your stuff. Let's get us in the dugout. Okay. And that's, uh, that's one of the challenges the Astros have is you know, they've got young pitchers and they've got young catchers too. One ball, one strike. That's a good point. I don't know if you have a catcher like a Jason Veritek. He's that guy. Who can deliver that message. With all that expertise he has acquired over all those years. And we talk a lot about the game planning that goes on before a game and all the, you know, the meetings with the pitching coach and whatever. If you don't have a catcher who can kind of lead a pitcher through that, it, it's much more difficult. Sure. Two balls, one strike. Paul is from Slidell, Louisiana. Are doing a nice job keeping the ball out of the hitting zone. And Inside corner and down, then a couple shots away. Just missing with that second offering. He started and did he go through with it? They will appeal a third. Nope, he checked the swing. Alan Porter with a call. It's now three and one, and Carlos Lee comes over. So if you send up uh, Carlos over to the mound. I don't think they sent him. I think he went on his own. Okay. Went over on his own. And, and then Carlos looked towards the dugout as if I, and Milsey might have been yelling. <laughs> don't don't, try, <laughs> don't might... deliver any messages contrary <laughs> to what I just told them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Three balls and a strike. Are they going to put him on. And work the top of top. Yeah, and that's just it's, it's just a percentage play. You know, Tapata is a better hitter than Paul. But Paul's a lefty, Tapata right-handed, and Paul's up there with a three-ball, one-strike count. So that, that changes the equation, of course. Now you start fresh with a new guy. And the new guy is one for four in this game. He's single to right in the fifth inning, Tapata. Phillies are blasting Florida nine to one in the eighth inning at Philadelphia. Jimmy Rollins hit his fifth. Dominic, Dominic Brown's hit two to give him four home runs. Milwaukee four, Chicago Cubs four in the eighth. Strike on the heater. Dominic Brown's been the Phillies' top prospect for a couple of years, or one of them anyway. Now starting to. Uh, Produce and we talked about Utley starting to swing it well, so the Phillies may go on a bit of a tear here. They don't need to score a lot to win with all that pitching they have. Foul back. Oh, and two. The Cubs have scored three in the bottom of the eighth against the Milwaukee bullpen. Ramos Ramirez hit his fifth home run. That was a two run shot to tie it. You say the last inning of this game has taken as long as the first seven? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Seems like it. <laughs> Ooh, oh, that looked good. good try. How do you take that pitch? Not sure. Nobody's that good. Maybe because you can't hit it. Nobody has that good of an eye. That's an 0-2 bias. And, uh, it was. It was out. Just missed. Yep. He knew. Tabata has 30 walks and he struck out 38 times. That one.
one is the ball. Mm. Mm. Two and two. Fans are buzzing about these oh, calls. He's making some good pitches. Took him outside, had him leaning out there after that last one, and threw one in. Number four right there. Certainly could have been called. Curveball, ball, little chop. Out to Fernando Rodriguez. Yikes. <laughs> Throws a grenade over to El Caballo. And in the ninth inning, it's no runs, no hits. Two men left. Now the bottom of the ninth. Farmers, Pence, and Lee, one nothing Pittsburgh. This season, the Astros are coming up at the bottom of the ninth inning against one of the top closers in the game this season, Joel Hanrahan. Coming up after the game, it'll be Astros Live. Stay tuned as the Bart and Art Show hits the airwaves again. Art Ennis and Art Howe. Oh, it's Kevin, Kevin Eschenfelder. That ruined it. That ruined the rhyming scene. Anyway, <laughs> it's uh, Hanrahan. He's 17 for 17. Yeah, boy, he's uh, he's been nails. For the Pirates. Big part of their return to respectability. 17 out of 17 with a 147 ERA. He has one of those saves against the Astros. He pitched in two of the games in Pittsburgh, May 6th and the 8th. Two innings, one hit, no runs in those two ball games for Hanrahan, 29 years old from Des Moines, Iowa. Much a two pitch pitcher, fastball slider, and very hard on both accounts. Fastball 97 miles an hour. Good hard slider. Then Barmas takes strike one. I'm sure it changed from 98. Mm -hmm. My apologies. That had some serious hop to it. It's one and one. Barmas 0 for 3. Hunter Pence next is 0 for 3. And then Carlos Lee is due up third in the Astros' ninth inning. Right handers 250. Lefties 196 against Hanrahan. They continue to play no doubles here, guarding the lines at first and third. Two hopper to third. Wood throwing for out number one. The Astros have been shut out once this season. Hunter Pence comes up his 23 game hitting streak on the line. Three fly outs. He's had good swings tonight. Wouldn't that be something if he drove one out of here? Oh. These fans would go crazy. He lined to right and hit two fly balls to center. A dramatic way to keep the hitting streak alive. Three out of eight in his career against Hanrahan. That's ball one. Astros were shut out here by Sean Markham of Milwaukee. Five nothing on the 29th of April. The only time they've been blank all year. Bouncer up the middle. Walker with the throw. Gets him. Two outs. 
And a lot of times when Hunter rolls over on a ball, he'll, he'll get a real kind of a head start coming out of the box. Looked, looked like he was back on his heels a little bit with this swing. Didn't quite get the break. He normally gets out of the box. Carlos Lee singled in the seventh. He's one for three. Line shot and it's caught by Cedeno and that's a one to nothing pirate win with six pitchers collaborating on a four hitter and Rahan getting saved number 18 and as many opportunities the win goes to Karstens who is four and four and a tough luck loss to Bud Norris who's four and five. Yeah, just a dandy of a pitching duel here tonight. This is coming up just a little bit short. So the Pirates who were 0 and 9 at Minute Maid Park last season take this one one to nothing. They get back to 500 at 33 and 33. We'll be right back.